Hey guys, I'm Nick and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial we will be creating an infection system and we will be using Houdini 19 Pyro Spread to actually drive our infection and we will be using Pop Grains. I did my best to explain everything here and I really hope it will be easy to understand even if you are a beginner. This tutorial is inspired from Evoked Form and his series intricate objects where he also uses these infection systems and scatters random objects on the surfaces. But before we start I would like to say a huge thanks to everyone who is supporting me by purchasing my project files. That's how you can help me allocate more time to create these tutorials and I'm really really grateful to every one of you who support me by doing that. Alright, so here we are in Houdini and uh, here, first of all, I downloaded this bone uh, VCL human femur from my mini factory, I think. Um, let me remove the grains for now and I will just show you where and what is. So obviously this bone is too huge, so I drop a match size, target size set to 5 here. Um, so yeah, made it a lot smaller and then I rotated it and then reversed the mesh and added the normals. Actually, yeah, you don't need UV project, we can just go with UV quick shade and attribute delete. So UV quick shade needed to actually apply any sort of like material in Redshift and then I deleted um, all the attributes. In this case it was this shop material pass which was from the UV quick shade and somehow Redshift was messing with that, so yeah, just deleted that. Here in the attribute delete node in primitive attributes, shop material pass. Um, here you are specifying that and it's deleted. Um, yeah, that's basically all um, that I did with a, with a bone. And then we go... Um, but you obviously will need to set up the grains first, but I just wanted to show you how to add the mesh just, just in case. So um, yeah, let's turn off the bone now and let's check our grains. What do we have here? Um, let me show you again, we import our file. Let me set it to the frame one. It's obviously too large, so we do the same mesh size 555. Five, five. Then we do the same exact transform because we want then our bones, to, our grains to appear on our bone. Then I want fairly even distribution of triangles and I see there are some, some corrupted um, triangles here. It was just like, like these things and maybe, maybe this one too. Um, yeah, it doesn't look good. Oh, actually, yeah, this little thing here. So what we can do, uh, let's drop a remesh now. I'm remeshing that three times smoothing set to 0.2 and target size to 0.03. And now we have fairly kind of even distribution, but we still have these, these little pins here. And yeah, uh, I think this one actually is broken. So I needed to drop a VDB from polygons and voxel size set to 0.015. And then I just converted it back to polygons, dropping a convert VDB and setting up convert to polygons. And now I have correct mesh without any sort of broken broken stuff. And then I drop a remesh again to make it a bit denser. But you know what? Um, the density of the of the mesh actually influences the pyro spread speed. So. In this tutorial I will be showing you the parameters for the mesh that is kind of like this dense. If you will have less dense mesh, obviously pyro will spread faster. So then what we need to do is to scatter um, just like a few points from the mesh that we remeshed. And then I added the spheres, set the primitive type to be polygon. Um, uniform scale to 0.2 and frequency to 5 and then I added a mountain node to just displace it a bit and then we drop a copy to points and mountain node goes to the first input and scatter node goes to the second input and if you did everything correct you will see a few displaced spheres that are scattered on our mesh so if I preview my remeshed bone you will see that they are kind of kind of on the surface 
And then what we can do is drop a group node and in the first input we drop our remesh node and in the second input we drop our copy to points and group types should be set to points, group name just group one and keep in bounding regions should be enabled. So checkbox here in the enable and bounding box is set to be bounding object. And what it does, it creates a group of points where our spheres intersect with the, with the bone. And these will be the groups from where we will be starting our burning. So then let's configure the pyro. We drop an attribute create and we create a temperature attribute. Um, it should be value set to one, uh, name temperature, and it should be only for the group one. So if I go and drop then pyro source spread node and I visualize that and here you can see in visualize we can select temperature you can see that these parts that are our group one and to these parts we actually set the temperature these are visualized here with a bigger temperature so you can play with these settings here in the pyro source spread node but basically in temperature change cooling rate is set to zero diffusion rate is set to 0.05 search radius set to 0.1 Max neighbor set to 25, noise type set to periodic parallel flow, element size set to 0.1, fractal octave set to 7.7, .7, liquidity set to 2.713, and roughness set to 0.529. And this gives me pretty quick but noisy and kind of like organic growth. And, oh, and also in fuel. Um, noise type set to periodic parallel, pulse duration set to 1.1 and element size 0 0.05. Um, in fractal max octave set to 7.07, .07, liquidity set to 2.28 and roughness set to 0.393. Let's preview what we have here. exactly around 300 frames to fill it up. Um, you can cache it out or maybe you don't want to cache it out, so there's not a big deal. Now I want to blur the temperature a bit, so if we go and after our file cache or after our pyroso spread, drop an attribute blur, set the attributes to be temperature, blurring iterations 5, step size 0.579. We should blur the temperature diffusion just a bit. So now I want to remap the temperature so I can use it for uh, let's say p scale and scale our grains here. So in our attribute remap and basically let's go with uh, with this one with this setup because this is just uh, smaller particles and this one is for bigger grains and yeah obviously particles. But for the attribute remap so original name is temperature new name is p scale so we are remapping uh, temperature to m p scale and know that I'm not using p scale I'm using m underscore p scale or any other variable that you will then modify and assign to p scale and in this case we are remapping from 0 and 1 to 0 to 0 0.007 and interpolation i think it's all default here and actually we can remove these groups because it was like when i was experimenting with this, this setup so now let's go to the popnet and set up our grains so here in source we obviously don't need this group but um yeah we we just dropped a pop solver um, pop network and here we have our pop solver and just few nodes here we start with the source first input which will be default when you drop a popnet and source emission type set to points geometry source set to use first context geometry burst is set to constant burst rate is set to 3000 you can play with that um, because if you let's say set up a 10,000 here you will see that they will clump together um, in like two or three layers of, of um, grains but I wanted to um, more like an equal distribution without much layering of, of these grains so for this one I'm using 3000 grains um, burn every every frame and now we drop a pop wrangle we assign our MP scale to P scale and then um, basically you can skip this part here but 
I want to show you how to make um, it a bit more interesting. So what do we have here? So let me show you a few things in Invex. So this function run, um, basically it, as it says here, creates a random number between zero and one from a seed. And seed should be different because if we, let's say, set one here or I don't know, 0 0.05 or just something like that, it will produce exact same number each iteration the wrangle is executed and it's executed for each point so i think we want something that will be unique to each point so let's say ptnum or actually ptnum like this all right so now we have a number from zero to one which will be different for every point we can set it for a p scale so let's say p scale plus equals and plus equals is equal to this so basically p scale um, at p scale plus two is absolutely equal to this so this means the same. So now we can do p scale plus equals rand at ptnum. And this will add to the p scale random number from zero to one. But then our grains will be huge and we don't want that. So we need to somehow remap this value from the random, which is zero to one. And then we are using fit01 function. So it takes the value in the range of 0 and 1 and shifts it to the corresponding value in a new range. So basically, if we type our random, which is anywhere from 0 and 1, then we can remap it to be from 0 to, let's say, 0 0.01. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. And if you want even more, like organic and non-even distribution. So here I'm saying that if this point number divided by 5000 is, let's say, equally divided, or I actually don't know how to tell that in, in English. So let's say if we have 500 divided by 500 is one. So, but 500 divided by 472, maybe will be I don't know, 1.80 uh, something. So this is not like divided properly or, or something. And maybe someone in the comments can help me with uh, properly explaining what it is. But basically, if the BTNM divides by 5,000, 500, sorry, I add another random value anywhere from 0 to point. 0.3 to our p scale that's how we will have like bigger grains and smaller grains and sometimes we will have even even bigger grains like really big and then we don't want our grains to actually fly away because if i comment out this you will see that they just fly away because we have no gravity. And here I want to say huge thanks to Doxia Studio. And I actually checked his tutorial a while ago with this infection system, but he used a solver to create the, the spread. And I just updated it uh, a bit with my Pyros, Pyro spread and a bit more um, grain logic here. But this is really cool and crucial thing here so we don't want any velocity so at v equals zero and that's how they actually will stay you will see now they will stay um in place so then we go into the pop solver i updated min substeps to be two and max substeps to be three added a merge added a static object which is our grains bone remesh um so they collide with it and yeah gravity will be here by default and i think that's uh, that's actually it so i cached um, a few versions here so this one growing like this and actually yeah we need to remove the visualization on the temperature so it should be like this and then you can add color nodes so here um, I added a color node and set the color type to be RAM from attribute. An attribute is p scale, so 
the bigger the particle the yellower it will be so that's that's basically it so i also have the green version and also i have another pop net where we have let me yeah show you like that so we have 8000 particles burn and then in pop wrangle i added a bit more these extra large particles here in the PTNM divided by 3300. Um, P scale is also said to be less and it results in a bit more dense and smaller grains here and in comparison with, with these. Then I added some lights. These are my RS lights here. And for the materials, set up two materials. So one is, um, I think this one, yeah, is uh, some sort of roughness material, roughness texture, and yeah, just just color for the bone. This is redshift material too; it goes for the bone. Um, and here, particle attribute lookup attribute name CD. So we are grabbing the look of our particles, of our grains, and grabbing the color of our grains to be precise. Feed it into the diffuse, adjusted roughness a bit, and um, that's it for the. Actual redshift, uh, just take this render object as particles, that's it. For the cameras, yeah, using two cameras, camera one and camera three, I think I've used this, these two. Uh, for the close-up shot and for the, for the actual uh, bone, <laughs> yeah. And let me fire up the redshift. So this is how it looks. As always, I'm rendering these on Fox Farm and I actually yeah, I rendered three passes because I rendered one um, kind of this full pass uh, with uh, this yellow and, and blue and then I rendered one with the green, close up with the green and I was like alright so I will need another one yeah, and this one was with the proper close up with these bluish things. So uh, yeah as always Fox Render Farm, super fast. You can see that 300 frames cost me four bucks. Um, another 210 frames cost me four bucks and another cost me actually like $3.78. Highly recommend this Render Farm. Saved me a ton of time and I think it's not that much to pay for like rendering something in 10 minutes when on my local PC it will be take, I don't know, day or even two days or something. So go check out these guys. My affiliate link is in the description. By signing in with my link, you will you will get some extra coupon credits that will help you test out this awesome farm. All right, guys. So I think that's it for today. And I really hope that it was useful and you learn how to create these infection systems. It's a lot easier with a pyro spread, in my opinion. And if you want to see more tutorials from me, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and check out the project files and my website which is also linked in the description. You will find tons of useful stuff there, some asset packs, project files, and more. I'll be back very soon. Bye.